My name is Diane Savona, and I'm a textile artist. I make art with textiles. Um, I sew, I dye, I put things together in unusual ways, and I try and use textiles to tell history. I started as a sculptor, carving stone, carving wood, and then when I became a mother, I realized you can't carve wood and stone with a small child in the room, <laughs> and found what women have found since millennia, um, that you can pick up a piece of sewing and you can work on this while you're taking care of a child. Mm. And it's like, aha, so this is why so many women sew. And at first it was a little awkward, and then... I got into it and bit by bit it was wonderful because you can take it with you anywhere. You can sit and be working on it while you're watching the soccer game. You can sit and work on it while you're in the teacher's meeting. It, it just, you can go with it. So that's what I did. There's a um, Italian uh, quilting technique called tropanto, where a line, a, a cord is put between two pieces of cloth. Mm. I had practiced that a little bit because you know you try different things and I thought well if a cord can be put under it then why not a button or why not the ends of a spool of thread if you take the plastic spools of thread and again you cut them off and put them under that you can have them underlying and have just their shape so you can basically fossilize them and here we have one it reads ancient textiles decayed long ago only impressions in the clay remain and I have here the uh, pieces of crochet that I've dyed dark brown. And some of them I've put under the cloth to make mm -hmm. these fossils. And some of them I've created in clay because we know about ancient textiles mainly by the way it sometimes got pressed into the clay. And the textiles um, decay, but you still have that impression. That's so wonderful. this is where I started. This is my mother's old um, sewing basket that I reconfigured. And on the cover here, you have actual pieces of yo-yo um, quilting and crochet and what have you. But if you open it up, inside you have the impressions where the cloth has been pressed onto cloth, and then you have the impressions in clay. So it's sort of showing the history. This is... Um, it's called kiosk. It's eight feet high. And it's wow. one of the last pieces I did, come on you, that had all letters and things underneath it. It's basically all the information that we have, and it's displayed here on a kiosk, the way you would display public information. But it's all about what information do we make public and what is private. Hmm. And so... Try storing that one. <laughs> Anyhow, then I went into my tiles, and some of these are in the show. Each of these is six inches, and basically it has pieces of information technology that I've taken apart and embedded under cloth. So there actually is a cord under here, and there actually is the cover, hang on, of a... Uh, a calculator. You're too young to remember pocket calculators, but there we go. And this is actually the dial of an old dial-up phone. And so it's, it's taking the technology that was once cutting edge and fossilizing it, saying this too will pass. And I made hundreds of these suckers. Taking things like um, old typewriters and cassettes and all the connecting rods and, and um, the vacuum tubes and playing with them and I had been doing a great deal of this and then realized that if I did it uh, if instead of just embedding the object if I gave the whole picture that I could get more information and so instead of making the tiles I went to what I call my tablets and the tablets this is a clay tablet these are embroidered and dyed, and they tell history that most people don't know. 
and I won't bore you with all of that, but the way I make them is by collecting images in Photoshop. You sit there and you kind of fish for little images. You change it all into a black and white image. You print out just the black and white as if you were making a coloring book on cloth and then dye it and then embroider it. And this is about the center of learning in Timbuktu. Before the library was burned, manuscripts were hidden and buried. always loved history, but social history, this business of history, the kings, the, the presidents, the, the wars, it's like, okay, that, that just, oh, I can't <laughs> deal with it. My grandmother was born in a thatched hut in Poland. All right. Um, I want to know what her story was. I want to know what the people that my ancestors, how was life for them? How was life for the people who came before them? Um, I tell the story how there's a book that James Michener wrote called Poland, and in it he describes the slaughter of a pig in the Middle Ages and how he, you know, the, the lord of the manor got the best cuts, and the peasants, my ancestors, would get the stuff that they used to make a sausage called kielbasa, and they would hang this in the um, fireplace to smoke it. Well, told my mother this. Hey, did you know? And she said, well, yeah, of course, that's how your grandmother did it, except she hung it in the pipe of the wood stove in her kitchen. <sighs> and what got me is, here's something that had been handed down for hundreds, maybe thousands of years, and in two generations, that knowledge was gone. Now, I don't want to know how to make fatty sausage, but what else was lost? Really, I should be making more clay tablets to bury so that after everything disappears, other people will be able to find it. It keeps evolving. I don't know how many more. I'm 71 now, so I don't know how many more years I'll be able to do this. But for as long as it goes, I'm having fun.